Second TESOL Presents Free Friday Webinars. I'm your hostess, Shelly Sanchez Terrell. And today we're going to talk about lesson starting, or lesson starters, ways to um, engage your learners in the first five minutes. But we're here every Friday. It's free and there's a recording. Go to AmericanTESOL.com. You'll find all the information. You'll also be able to get um, a certificate of attendance. You'll be able to find the bookmarks and you'll also be able to find the size to downshare uh, to download at ShellyTerrell.com lesson starters. Now we have a huge webinar today so I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, because we have over 40 ideas and resources to share with you about, sit, uh, sh about starting your lessons and how to engage your learners. And so hopefully you can take some of these ideas and you can use one every single day um, that you teach and you can start your lessons much differently um, to kind of give you some ideas. So I'm going to go through the resources quickly, but of course if you go to ShellyTerrell.com slash lesson starters or if you go to American so you'll find the recording and you'll find the slides. I really love this because um, one of the reasons I became a teacher is because, like Robert Frost says, to wake, get my students to wake up, to get them to get epiphanies and to get them excited about different topics. And it doesn't matter whether you're teaching them English, you're teaching them business English, you're teaching them science, um, if you're teaching them CLIL, if you're teaching them um, whatever you teach them math, they can get into it, especially if you really enjoy what you teach. So I made this infographic and you're going to find the infographic at ShellyTerrell.com um, which I sh shared earlier, Lesson Starters. And when you go to the infographic then you'll be able to hover around the infographic and you'll find different types of links. Now one of the links you're going to find is actually, and I believe she's inside this webinar, um, to Theodora Papp's blog because uh, she has um, she had a guest post from Vicki Loris on how to um, different games you can play with dice. So I'm not going to be able to get to all of these ideas, but hopefully this helps um, you you see some of the ideas that are out there, and then you'll be able to go and you'll be able to hover over it and click on wonderful resources like Theodora's blog post to get more ideas. So one of the so I'm going to go over the 40 ideas, and the one I'm going to start with is um, icebreakers. And there are digital icebreakers that you'll find. Um, and, and here you see the links, but if you just go to ShellyTerrell.com slash lesson starters, you'll have all the links there, so don't worry about it. But there's different ways. As soon as your students get into the classroom, and one of the most powerful um, instructional practices that I ever uh, did was when I had my students walk in, they knew they had a lesson prompt, they knew they had a prompt, challenge, or mission. And that was always in the corner of the board, so wherever, and now you can use an LCD projector, I mean there's so many different technologies and tools, but when I began I used to write these little prompts on the board, and I used to make them, I used to differentiate them. They were always something different. Now it was something, they also had a writing journal to go with it, but sometimes I, I didn't want them to, so they knew it was great for uh, classroom management because as soon as they walked in the class, they would look at the corner of the board and they would see whatever that was written down. Now a lot of teachers sometimes in classes around the world are required to put a lesson objective you can put your, your challenge or your prompt or the mission that they have to do in the first five minutes. And that's the rule. Is, is, is it's limited to five minutes, so you have to find things they can do in five minutes. So different icebreakers that you might have. You might have, for example, you could put challenge, find, um, write down a list of, of five things um, that you would take with you to deserted island or three things and that's a very popular icebreaker that there is and share it with a partner so they can do something like that in five minutes how many of you can um, go and, and do something like this you could also do something like a bingo you could say okay you have five minutes to find someone and I have a digital bingo on the site that you can download um, for free and then I also have a human bingo um, you could give them different, there's hundreds of icebreakers. If it's less than five minutes, then you can go ahead and put that 
um, in the first five minutes. Now, the other trick that I should tell you as well is because they had a lesson journal, they had to document something. So they had this um, journal, and then they would have to write down, for example, students' answers. And so when they're when they're doing something like this, they're practicing what? They're practicing questioning skills. They're practicing writing, they're practicing reading because sometimes they read their other um, students' answers and they're also practicing conversation skills, conversation with their peers. So you can give them different icebreakers and challenges like that. Another very popular um, is you can have them play different games and there's different types of games. I'll show you where you can find um, games that they can play for five minutes really quick. like. Um, uh, and, and you can put that easily on top of the corner of the board. You can say, go to this site and play any of the games. You have five minutes. You can even put like a clock or something like that. And whatever they don't finish in the first five minutes, um, you can always give them a little bit of extra time. Or one of the, what I would tell them is, okay, then they have to do that for homework. So they were very motivated to get these done in five minutes, and that's why they would come to their chairs, they would sit down, they would be quiet, and they would quickly do this. And some would even come earlier um, before, so they could try and get some of these, um, the, these done. So it was really great classroom management as well. I'm very engaging and motivating. So with iSpy, whatever your topic is, and that's the idea. So you, the idea is to match this to your curriculum. Whatever you're teaching at the moment, take, take an icebreaker or one of these 40 lesson starters and apply it to that. So for example, let's say that we're learning about restaurants. Well, this is um, an iSpy game that you can find in my book, Learning to Go. Um, but I'll tell you how you can use it in your classroom. So what you do is, is you have your students, if you're studying shapes, for example, they can see shapes drawn on the board if you want. And then you can say, okay, you have to go around and you have to take a picture of uh, a shape that you see around the classroom, one of these shapes. And then you share, it has to be a zoomed in shot, and then you share it with your peer, and then your peer has to guess what that shape is and also what the object is in the class. So this is something they can do within five minutes. They can take a picture. Um, so you can do that with any topic. Let's say that they're learning about, for example, um, they're learning about verbs, they're learning about emotions, they're learning about, so they can do nouns, they're learning about conjunctions. So they can think of ways to play this I spy game from that. The other way that you can do this is you can have them, for example, um, I spy in the textbook. So if you have a book that goes with this, in the first five minutes, they can look through the chapter and the, you can put a list of things they have to spy. Okay, find someone in, that's important in this chapter. Uh, find um, a quote by someone in this chapter. Find an important date in this chapter. You know, things like that that everybody can I spy and take a picture of. And then they can have their their peers guess and then go through the chapter. It becomes like a quiz in a way. And it's a good way to introduce them to the chapter because they're flipping through the books trying to take pictures um, with their devices. Or they can, of course, just write it down if you want them and you don't have any technology. So it's not reliant on technology. Um, but QR codes uh, kind of are. So if you do have where they can um, have a mobile device or something, they can do QR codes. Um, and when they scan the QR code, um, there's different ways I've done this. So I'm going to show you some different examples of integrating QR codes as soon as they walk in. Um, and I've done this with lots and lots of people all over uh, the world uh, where they get actually this QR code. They either get a black one or they get a red one. And they have to match them. So a red matches one of the blacks. If you actually took your phone um, and then... So I have my phone, and you you scan this, then you would see these are jokes, and that's another idea is to use a joke as a lesson starter. Um, one of the the red has the joke, and the the black there's a black matching one, and they have um, 
it has the pun that goes along with it. So one person gets, one student gets a red, one student gets a black, and they go around the classroom and they look for each other to find the joke and pun. But you can do that with test and answers, um, that you can have question and answer. Um, you can have that with a vocabulary word and a definition. So as soon as they walk in, they grab that QR code, and then they have to find their peer that also grabbed that. I mix them up, so I make sure that, you know, there's a bunch of them. They lay there, they reach in the bag, they grab it, and then they go. Um, there's also this. Um, there's where they can scan an actual poster. You can put these QR codes on the wall, and they can do something. Here's a great example. Here's one that links to periodic, um, the periodic elements, videos of them. So if you scan any of these QR codes, you're welcome to use this. You, I found it on Flickr. Um, and if that applies to what you teach, then your students can scan this, they can find the video, and then you can have them write something in their journal, like what they found. So I think it's really important that when you have lesson starters, that your students um, have to document. And so that would be my advice to you. Um, and what I did is every other Friday, I would pick up that journal. So they would receive a grade for that journal. Um, and that's the way I did it. Of course, you don't have to do it that way. Um, of course, they can. if you use a lot of technology, that journal can become a, a blog instead. If you don't use a lot of technology, then um, you can have a bunch of notebooks that they have. The other idea is put it on an object, put it on something. So, for example, um, if you're teaching things like vocabulary about the classroom or something like that, you can put it on a chair, you can put it on a wall, you, can, you know, you can put QR codes everywhere and it can lead to something. I really like this. I got this idea, um, an example of integrating QR codes with Realia from the PE Geek, who has wonderful ways that he actually shows you things about the bones and, and teaches different students about um, different parts of the body by putting it on the skeleton, which I think is genius. You can do that with a stuffed animal. You can do that. You know, there's so many things you can do with that. Experiment. So I used to actually, uh, a major part of my training, why I, I have a lot of different ideas is because I did a teacher internship at a hands-on science museum. I helped build that museum. I helped create experiments, demonstrations, um, curriculums, uh, real world science is what the curriculum was. Be so before I had my master's and in, in did English as a um, second language, I used to do science and math and history and things like that. So um, one of the things we did was experiments. And there are ways to get your students to do five-minute experiments. Now, you may not think so, but there is. So one of the things we would do is we would take a film canister and we would put Alka-Seltzer in it, and then we would close that film canister, a little bit of water, and then we would put it, and then as soon as you put it, it explodes. So that's a demonstration or an experiment um, that your students can see. But we would do that with rockets. They would have to design the rocket to go with that explosion and things like that and see which would go further. Some other things we would do is, is um, things with dry ice. You can do demonstrations with that. Um, but you can do different types of experiments. Uh, when you There's one of the ways that you can find a lot of great um, experiments is you don't even have to do them yourself. Let's say that I like to. I like to put in a cart, roll it in, and then I like to have my stuff set up and sometimes wear the lab coat. And then my students can see things such as sink or float. And when you do something like a demonstration or experiment, you can have them use something like a graphic organizer um, where they do predictions. So, for example, they can predict. You can say, okay, what do you think is going to happen when I do this? What do you think is going to happen when I fill this cup with uh, water and then I boil it? You know, and then your students can... Um, can, can make guesses, they can make educated guesses, they write in their journal, of course, because that's how you know that they're, um, that they're documenting what they're learning. So, but you can also have what's called, um, you can find a lot of ideas if you go to sixsecondscience.tumblr.com. Now, this is from General Electric. Now, um, you can even search the hashtag sixsecondscience, but you find six-second videos, they are taken from the so you don't necessarily have to do the experiments. You can have your students see one of these experiments, and then they can talk about um, 
they can talk about you know which was their favorite experiment um, what they learned from it they can write instructions well this is what the person did first and this is what so they're learning how to write they're writing down what they observed they like also can uh, make predictions um, for that as well so you can do it with a six second video clip and those you can embed anywhere as well so that's nice to know. Um, you can even go to some sites and it turns into a GIF so you don't even need it um, connected to the internet if you download it ahead of time or make it into an animated GIF. You can even include that in a PowerPoint. So if you want to put it in your LCD projector and then write the questions after, they can do that within five minutes. It only takes them six seconds to watch the video. So I talked about graphic organizers, and graphic organizers are a great way to really start your students brainstorming. So you can get them to brainstorm about the topic, and there are lots of ways to do that. So one is you can find a lot of free graphic organizers online with Creately.com. Your students can fill in these online, or they can do this with paper. You can print them out and do a paper. Let's say they're studying animals. Then you can have them um, write down, for example, they can do... Um, a comparison contrast chart of different animals like um, maybe an amphibian versus um, you know and it's just information that they already know and we learn from the social cognitive theory of uh, Vygotsky says that if we get our students to start bringing in their experiences what they already know then we um, can get them to connect those dots in their brain and they they learn the new information uh, more quickly so um, you can do something like that okay um, a herbivore versus a carnivore things like that so it's so when they're doing these graphic organizers at the beginning they're just doing things that they know they don't have to necessarily put right answers you're not looking for right answers with these lesson starters so I wouldn't I don't grade their journals to see if things are correct I grade their journals to see if they completed whatever the mission was or whatever um, their five minute mission challenge or prompt was. And so I think that's important because I want them to know as soon as they walk in and sit down that there's really not um, any wrong answers. I just want them to put in their different knowledge and to start thinking about the topic. And, get their brains to start opening up to the topic and that's important because sometimes you you don't know what your students are coming from you don't know if they're coming from a busy day if they're tired if they're hungry if they just got in a fight with their best friend outside in the hallway whatever it is um, they need to refocus or maybe they're still made a bad great on a test or they got in trouble and so when they go into your classroom these five um, minute starters or engagement activities really get your students to start thinking about your topic they start getting the brain focus and then they can sit down they know okay I, this is Miss Sanchez's class I really need to focus on it so I think it's really important um, you can find some um, interactives um, graphic organizers basically online they're, they're graphic organizers and they're called interactives that you fill out at readwritethink.org there's over a thousand different activities you'll find at readwritethink.org you can have them do this collaboratively so you can even do things like put a problem for example you can say Superman needs a new cape what kind of and it needs it to have superpowers or we have this new superhero and he needs a, a you know a cape that has superpowers or he needs a new um, uniform that has superpowers and you know have them solve and then they can do like concept maps things like that so you can see some of the students I've worked with brainstorming together so they don't have to do it separate but they have five minutes you can get them in pairs and you can say you have five minutes to come up with a drawing or a new car or you know what is the car of the future what is the way that we're gonna get um, to another planet and move on it or how are we gonna fix pollution things like that and then they just come up with ideas now if you have a poplet account poplets a really great way for many many different voices in your classroom to have um, to, to be able to go on and they can do this on the computer and then all of them can contribute they can contribute a video a link a drawing an idea an image um, text 
But my favorite tools um, to do these kind of projects, and that's what I often use, is Padlet and Linuit. And the reason why I use these tools is you don't even have to register. Any of your students, and Padlet's even better because Padlet, you can make it password protected. So you can even put, you can put, and it's a very easy URL. It's usually padlet.com slash something slash, you know, slash Shelly slash whatever you want to call it. Or, and, and you can even um, customize the URL. So these are free apps. They can um, access this on a computer, a laptop, a Chromebook. They can access it on their um on their mobile device, it doesn't even have to be a smart, fancy phone or anything like that. So, Linuit and Padlet. You can use augmented reality. Now, a lot of times when people hear AR, augmented reality, they think this is very difficult, but it doesn't have to be because um, there are certain things that are really easy. I'm going to show you some easy ways to do a five-minute prompt in with virtual reality. So one is quivervision.com. Quivervision.com, they used to be Kolar, but now they changed. And so what happens is if you have this app, then your students, they color something, and then they can take your phone, and they can see it come to life. So you can find many, many more. See how easy that is? They color it in five minutes. Then they take your phone and they see what it is. They have some for the ocean. They have some for zoo animals. They have some for many different types of ways to integrate this in your classroom. They have some for characters full of stories. And then your stu students can use this as a writing prompt where they just go and they, they write what happens next. This is a free one of the uh, sheep who plays sports. Um, they have many different ones, and um, it comes to life whatever they write on it. They can even write words and things like that. So you can find out more about this in uh, Terry Echo's blog, which is Engage Their Minds, wordpress.com. And if you put slash augmented reality, you're going to see this wonderful chart with apps, tutorials, her lesson ideas she's done with her students, and activities that she suggests for it. It's one of the best charts I've ever seen on augmented reality. And I've talked a lot about prompts. Now, prompts are where you inspire your students to write. I have tons and tons of these prompts listed, and we've even done a webinar on it. So I'm going to go through that one really quickly. You can inspire your students with podcasts. And, and one of the great things about podcasts is if you do have a lot of times that I have um, – inspired my students with different things, um, in, including podcasts, and gotten them to think about it. Um, I usually have my one device, and my students don't usually have technology. I've worked with one computer, two computer. I've worked with 80 students, 400 students, who maybe have a couple of phones in the classroom or something. So how do we get them to learn with that? Well, I use a lot of my own technology. And a lot of times with podcasts, if you subscribe to them, then you can have them downloaded, and then your students have to practice the listening. So that's what I do. Here are a few sites that are good for teachers. There's OTR.com. Now, of course, if you go to ShellyTarrell.com, oh, I forgot to put the link to that one, but that one is ShellyTarrell.com slash audio. And if you go to that, then you're going to be able to see the podcast. So this one is um, little short clips, news stories, and it has a script to go with it. It has what the famous broadcaster is saying, and these are from the past. So these are actually news stories, and the, what I do is I get the, te the students to write, like, what happened, what do you think the news was, and they have to practice their listening with it. You can find news for anything. Why do you think it happened? One of them is um, that I used with my students in, in Venezuela was that they had to guess what the news stories was, and they had to say, like, what did you hear? What happened? What were the description words? Um, how did the the broadcaster um, was this was this an an event? Was this an you know and different questions? And so they answer that, and then they try to predict what it was, or guess, or say what it was before I show them the script. So they get the script after. So when they learn something like this, uh, when they hear the little news clip. Um, one of them was, for example, a sinking of a ship, and so they all had different ideas about it. There are some other educational sites for podcasts that you can play that is safe for your students. Um, some made by students, digitalpodcast.com, podcastdirectory.com, and so you can find any subject. 
But of course, I like to use some of my favorite podcasts. I don't watch TV a lot. I actually listen to podcasts all the time. I love podcasts. Some of my favorite ones are about um, science. I listen to Invisibilia, Radio Lab, This American Live, Serial, uh, TED Talk Hour, and I play those clips for my students. One of the ones I did in Venezuela with my uh, students in Venezuela was I played one from Invisibilia. And what it was is there was two cups. There was two cups, and one was labeled dog, and the other was labeled cat. And um, in Invisibilia, they say how um, they did an experiment, and they had people put in a penny for each, uh, for the one that they liked, they preferred. And the question was, do you prefer cats or dogs? So guess what my students did after they listened to the little clip of Invisibilia. Now, they only listened to that clip. They only listened to the part that talked about that. And I said, okay, now you have two cups. What do you want to ask students in the class? And then give them something like beans, not necessarily pennies, but they can have things like beans. And then they, they try to predict, okay, what are their students, um, the students going to do or the students. Then they have to do things that they think that, more people are. They have to say, oh, I think more people are summer or summer people versus winter people. Oh, I think m more people would prefer a car versus a motorcycle. And they get to decide those. So those are little ideas we got from a podcast. So the podcast, and they loved that lesson. They thought it was one of the best. And then, of course, we went to the bigger lesson, which is where they had to come up with their own podcast. So talking about podcasts and being inspired listening to less than a five-minute podcast, and there's so many different podcasts out there that you can choose from to match any kind of topic or theme you're learning for the day. And just make sure that it's less than the five minutes. I would, I would say have them listen for just a minute or even less of a podcast. Um, but Story Corps has a lot of interviews, and they're really short. They're sometimes 30 seconds, a minute, and they talk from different parts of history, different topics, people interviewing. But the great thing about Story Corps is it also asks, gives students ways that they can interview and how to be good at interviewing, and that's one of the ways to engage your learners. Um, have them interview someone, another student. Um, they can take a poll. They can take a survey. They can make their own poll. So that could be the prompt. The prompt could be, oh, you have to create a poll. We're learning about, um, we're learning about the p politics, okay? So what kind of poll would you ask future voters in this election? So they come up with a poll, okay? And then they, they or a survey, in five seconds and then they go around the classroom and they ask students um, I mean in five minutes and then they come up and so they take about a minute to make that survey that poll and then they go around the classroom and they find the answers for it so um, that's one way that you can get your students to do that so interviews um, there's a lot of ways that they can actually record that interview um, online as well if you want to do a technology component so you can see that a lot of these ideas, I'm sharing with you ways that you can do it without technology, the way I've had my students do it without technology, and ways that you can do it with technology. And I've had my students do it with technology as well. So Audioboo, iPadio, Soundation, GarageBand, Audacity, SoundCloud, Podomatic, all of those are free tools where you can record. Now, the other one that I forgot to add, which is even even easier, is Vukuru. So if you use Vukuru, that's going to be really easy for you to go and do that. And talking about listening, talking, well, one of the ways to engage your students is with a song. You can actually have them pick up song lyrics, um, or you can have them go to a site. Um, like lyricstraining.com and say, okay. And there are a lot of songs to match different topics that we had. So when I worked in Germany and I had my students um, there, my adult students, I would have them use songs to learn a lot. And so a lot of times I tell them, okay, pick whatever song you want, go through the lyrics, um, you have five minutes, and then later on you're going to have a presentation about this. Like, why is that your favorite song? And so we would have a whole class extended, but we would begin with a song. Or I would show them, like, a Beatles song. And I would say, okay, write the first lyrics down. And I'd say, okay, find the rest, find lyrics within here, within this Beatles songs. It's like a deconstruction activity. So they, I would say, okay, find your favorite line or two and write it down from a Beatles song. Or from a particular song that I already had for them. 
and then they could go to lyrics training or something like that. One way that you can do it is also word clouds, and that's one of the ways that um, another one of the 40 ways to engage learners in the first five minutes. Show them um, a word cloud. Now, you can go to this and you can find many guess the wordle kind of ideas and activities your students. So you can even just push this, uh, put this up, and then your students have to guess something from the wordle. Um, I've seen them do like guess the president who made the speech, um, guess what the animal this describes, guess, you know, just different things like that, guess the quote, things like that. So here they have guessed the lyrics wordle, so you can actually make, have the lyrics into a wordle, and then they have to guess which lyrics they are. Um, you can also have videos um, um, that you inspire students with, and that's, a lot of times that's, um, you find a lot of video ideas and things. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it in Discovery Channel. There's just millions of places. If you look at flipped class resources, you'll find a lot of those ideas. And I put a lot of them on ShellyTarrell.com slash video. And I also have something um, for video flip class. So you can go to my Pearl Trees and find flip class areas to have little video segments. So one of the ones that we is popular with language learners is LessonStream.org. These are all free video clips that Jamie Ketty has collected for you. He also has a site called VideoTelling.org. ViralELTWordPress.com. It takes you and it shows you different videos that your students can see. So have them watch the video first really quick. Um, you can do stop motion videos. Um, and then the prompt can be either they can do a writing prompt with it or they can do something like sometimes I have them make a script. One of the ones that I've used is a viral video is the talking babies, the talking twin babies that are like da 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 and da da da. And so I had them write down a script of what they believed the babies were saying. Um, you can have them play a video interactive quiz. So if you want them to just have that video as the prompt and you find a good two-minute video or something like that because they need the time to be able to complete the activity. So I would recommend even even shorter, one minute or 30 seconds. Um, remember, you can always find 15-second and 6-second videos from Vine and Instagram. So if you go to YouTube, you can find a lot of short videos too. And Blubber.tv actually has video quizzes, so you can make any of those videos into interactive quizzes. You can actually go to BlubberTV.com um, and uh, I mean blubber.tv and you can choose one of those videos and say here this is your five minute um, engagement activity or your your lesson starter today and they can do that and they can take the quiz that goes with this this one I thought was particularly good it was name the basketball player so they see the basketball player playing and then they have to guess who it is they just choose so I think that's a good lesson starter um, they can make or invent something. I've done this with Play-Doh. That's one of my favorite things for students to... I've also done it with Lego. So they just go and they have to grab a bunch of Legos, grab a bunch of... Um, and they can even grab crayons and draw something. So this is do something kind of thing. And so they there's also maker kits. There's maker kits where you can have students build something within five minutes. So um, I've done it with recycled materials where they get a box of recycled goods and they have to build the next robot, build the next phone that does great things. Or with Play-Doh, they can do so much. Build your uh, an alien that you find, discover in another planet. That's, or a monster. I've done it uh, with young learners that way. Um, you can also have different challenge cards um, when you're trying to get them to do so. It doesn't necessarily always have to be in the board. And this is something that I'm playing with these days, um, is getting them to do something with the challenge. So something is, for example, I made up this one. They asked you to build a space shot, draw what it looks like. And so each person can get a challenge. So for example, whatever card they pull out, that's their five minute challenge. Um, show a TED talk. And so one of the best resources, and there's even children who do um, TED talks is Logan LaPlante who did a very famous one that I love showing. You can show um, the videos by um, Kid President as well. He's eight years old and he has a lot of great short videos. Um, but you can find a lot of TED Talks if you go to ed.ted.com. You can print out the transcript. Um, you can also get lesson ideas to go with it. You can even create a lesson on edted.com. 
any of those TED Talks that you enjoy. You can have them walk into a scene, and I got this from LessonStream.org, Jamie Ketty's side again. Um, you can do so much with um, if you have masking tape, and there's a webinar on masking tape itself, but you can create a scene. So you can make things look different in the classroom, move it up a bit, put a circle around, and then put something on the bottom with masking tape or something that you can easily clean up. You can set up something, and you can say, um, okay, this is the scene. We see this body what happened to the body and you can have a um, a five minute where people um, your students write down for five minutes what happened you can have them learn with a um, infographic now you can find lots of infographics online um, but they can also create infographics later so this is one way um, to get them to learn about different things um, as well it's called data visualization um, but my favorite in the one that I made that particular graphic with is PictoChart. I love PictoChart. Easel.ly is um, really fantastic. Um, Easel.ly has great iPad app. So does Canva for making um, infographics and info pics. And I also use ThingLink. So you, you find all the links and stuff in that infographic um, that I'll show you again with ThingLink. But these are some of my favorite ones as well. Um, you can use comics, and you can. Uh, next week we're going to talk about comics, so I'm not going to get into it. But Make Believe's comics has a lot of uh, comic prompts where students fill in the dialogue or they fill in the comic according to what it is. Um, I didn't put it up here, but I should have put the French Strip app. The French Strip app will begin a comic and then students end it, so it's something they can do within five minutes. Toon Do and Comic Heads um, are my other two favorite. Um, websites for making comics um, and comics head is a mobile app that's on any device including your Kindle so I think that's really cool um, you can use magic now I got this idea from Barbara Butas you can follow her on Twitter and she has this wonderful YouTube video where her students are actually doing magic tricks so you can show them a magic trick or you can give them instructions on how to complete that magic trip or you can have them watch a video and see if they can replicate that magic trip. And that could get them interested in having a conversation about illusion versus reality. Or they can learn math or science behind it, peripheral vision, things like that. And of course, there's always games. We talked about games already, but you can find a lot of games at Tiny Tap, Get Kahoot. Um, they can even have their own trivia games and things like that. And trivia was another way. So you can put a piece of trivia on the board as well. Um, and you can find a lot of ideas, ShellyTarot.com games. So I kind of went through things really fast, and there's so many ideas out there. So that's why I created this Engage Them in 5 Minutes graphic. And with each of these ideas, when you hover over it, you'll find the link to kind of describe this um, idea so how you can use this in the classroom jokes and surveys and polls and quotes how to put an inspiring quote on the board um, and get your students thinking about that you can find them um, if you go to shellytarot.com um, slash lesson starters and you can also um, of course we'll get the recording if you go to americantiesel.com or you can go to youtube.com slash user slash atiesel so you'll find all of that information. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions or anything like that, um, you can always contact me on Twitter or other social media. And we will see you next week. Um, don't forget, if you're part of the ESLtech.com course, you can get a certification for teaching with technology recognized by many different institutes. Um, and this is if you complete the ESLtech.com course offered by American TESOL.